episode 99. We've come a long way. As promised, we're going to take a look at the machine that uses these video cartridges. The EIAJ2 color sort of open reel, but now in a cartridge machine. After we looked at the open reel one a short time ago. We'll start off by taking one of these apart to see what's going on inside it. Maybe not that one because it looks good and unused. Maybe this one because it looks like it's seen better days. We'll open this up and perhaps we'll put that tape we tried out on the black and white machine into here. If this tape's all moldy, oh, look at that though. Gonna be able to get that open with the screws all rusted out. And then we'll bring the machine over, it's very heavy. Haven't been plugged in for a long time. Uh, so I will turn it on for the first time while recording it just in case something happens. Hopefully it will power up. Uh, horrible screw, make a mess. This hasn't been opened before because the label is still intact. I don't know what way you're supposed to open these. Oh, I think that's a thing to stop the record, the erase prevention thing. Oh, the label doesn't get damaged. Oh, I guess it opens that way. Whoa, look at that. Extreme fungus tape. <laughs> wow. And so here's the leader that gets fired out this hole and um, wraps around the stuff inside the machine to thread it up. And yeah, that tape's had it. Look at that. It's got mold all over it. And it's really stuck down. That's terrible, isn't it? I wonder if we can peel that off. Should we try it? Should we stick the this tape into this cartridge housing? Might as well. It's just very dirty. Tip all the rust out. Yeah, I think that's going to have to go in the trash, unfortunately. That's a shame. That's not in a good way, is it? You wouldn't want to put that into the machine. Yeah, it's like that the whole way through. Okay, we're to unwrap this. And I didn't think this tape was in that good condition either, was it? But it was definitely not as bad. So we'll just get rid of a bit of the end. Oh, that was the thing that retains that. It ain't that anymore. Now, I don't know what to attach this. We're going to have to clean this as well. I will tidy up the mess and clean the strip. And I guess we'll try some Kapton tape. That's probably the best quality tape I've got. And we'll stick back this leader on. Then we'll look at the machine. Right, we've got this cleaned, sort of, clean the end better, since we want to stick tape onto that, tape, tape, not tape, but tape, tape. And get a fresh piece of this. Yeah. That's not good, is it? Alright, so my idea to get this lined up was to lay it down over the the tape and then we can be fairly sure that it's somewhat straight so I don't have a proper splicing block or any of that fancy stuff I suppose we need to have it in the right direction so that because this thing is quite curly so we need to go that way so just lay that on there and then tape the end onto it with a piece of this stuff 
people will be saying, oh, that's all wrong, you can't do it like that. Well, we're doing it like that, because that's the best that we got right now. It's not going to make it straight, is it? Because it's all about this curve, the curl here. That will be straight enough. Even if it rips off in the machine, it probably doesn't matter that much. Because we can just pull it out. There you go, it's perfectly attached. That's never going to fail, is it? Well, we don't even know if the machine will turn on, so... Yeah. Okay, we'll get this... And it clicks because it's getting snapped into these little clippy things. By that roller there pushing on it. Okay. Put this cover back on. And it's just going to have two screws. So we already know there's something on this tape because we had tried it. So I think that's probably a good place to start. We put that clip thing back in there. Let's bring in the machine and we'll give it a go. Alright, here we got a, a national brand NV5130. It's a, a video cartridge recorder. So you put the cartridge in there and it tells you there do not put fingers or any object into the cartridge compartment. There's a pause button, which is non-latching, I guess it's the same as what we saw before. There's some extra things there you can do. You choose one of two cameras as the input, or the TV connector, color black and white, int sync or normal, not really sure about that. A tracking control, which has a fix at one end, a skew control, which I think is a mechanical control. Same sort of piano key transport controls we saw on the other machine, but now players in that direction, not that direction like before. Then there's some, there's an edit control, even insert potentially insert editing. When you put that down, the levers have snapped off that switch. Tracking level counter, audio and video levels. There's this interesting clock thing. A tape indicator, so uh, presumably that white will come around as the tape gets used. And there's this thing called search here, which moves that red pointer around. So I think that means if your program starts 25 minutes into the tape, you can set it there and go fast forward, and it will stop once it reaches that point. Yes. So if we look inside it, the cover's already removed. We see the cartridge goes into here. There's a warning about the solenoids being powered by 100 volts, so you're not supposed to touch them. So we need to be careful there. So the place where the tape comes out of the cartridge is on the corner there, which is here. And then there's a track which runs around the video head, the audio control head, down, it's now low down. The cap's down there and the pinch roller, which is looking a little bit moldy but it's still there not too crusty and then the chute comes out and then here's the take up reel inside the machine and then once that gets sensed by something this lever will come in and rest against the tape to help it wind in better so there's a sensor there which is a light bulb and a light sensor to detect when the lead is finished and the tape is starting. Oh, there's also another little thing here. I guess that one comes in when it's threading to help it, the leader pull itself in. Yeah, that makes sense because the tape will be coming across here. So if that gets pulled in, then it will direct it under itself so that it winds on properly. Yeah, we might have an issue here because the that light sensor could get upset by the environment lighting. I don't know if we can take the bottom off this thing. It's very heavy, hard to move around. Doesn't quite fit camera at the widest. These various clips 
for removing boards. These things push to the side and retain it, and then if you put them in the middle, they will let the board pull out. So they're on sockets, but I found that very tight. If someone's replaced those resistors, or was that normal? It's all discreet stuff. Late 70s, I guess. It's like a motor driver. Edge getting the things down there. I don't really want to destroy this because it's quite a, a rare thing. So we won't be taking it apart too much today. Just enough to have a look at some various bits in it. I get this one. I don't know, we'll also see whether it works at all. Oh, there's a clip there for that one. You wouldn't want it falling out, would you? Another board with stuff on it, more very discreet. Good old school construction. It's not too much corrosion coming out of the legs of the capacitors, so that's a good sign. Might not be completely ruined yet. Unless they just dried up without leaking. Should we turn it on? See what happens. See if any of the smoke gets out. And then we'll have a go at trying it out. Assuming it powers up. But yeah, we need to check that we're not going to mess that up by the light. Perhaps we should turn some lights off. Alright, I'm going to plug it in. So we'll see what happens. I'm pretty sure the power switch is broken. And but it seems to be pushed into the in position at the moment. Okay, some fan turned on. Yeah, it's just that fan at the back running. Oh, and the capstan motor is running. Okay. Ah, uh, but that... L well, I don't know, because it might need a tape in for that light bulb to come on, maybe, to not wear it out. The lights for the meters on the front are on. We'll get... Oh, let's have a look at the back of it. And we'll get a video uh, cable connected up in anticipation. And uh, maybe we need to change a light bulb. <laughs> Alright, this is what we get on the back. There's a remote control connector, which is interesting. Some sort of edit stuff can be connected. The voltage selector, microphone, auxiliary, in and line out audio, the video inputs, the TV connector which has video ins and outs, the other video output. They're on the PL259 connectors again like we saw on the other machine, like what you get back in the day. So we'll join that up to the video output and then we get it moved around again and we've got that JVC monitor still with a camera pointing at it. So hopefully that will give us a good picture. All right, the monitor's there. Let's try this out. Let's put that back on. And we'll try sticking the tape in. And if that light bulb doesn't come on, then we'll have to change the light bulb. But we'll put in the cartridge and see what happens. There you go. No. no. Yeah. It's sort of started. Maybe it's too bright for that light bulb. Let's if we turn off all the lights and try again. Well, I mean, too bright for the light sensor. Otherwise, we might have to cover that. get the tape out for some reason. I'm just going to start off the tape coming out of the cartridge in case there's a problem there to get it started. So it seemed like it wasn't feeding out for some reason. I guess there's some other problems with this thing. We've got to see it thread up once. Perhaps we'll try a different tape just in case there's something up with that one. Hmm. 
Maybe a belt is ruined somewhere. Don't know, just wondering about the position of that thing because it seems to be blocking the chute that the, the tape comes out of. Yeah, I don't know. Try rebooting it. That's quite disappointing because it looked so promising the first time when it seemed to thread up all right. Uh, but it was probably the light too bright, maybe, and it hadn't realized. Yeah, well, if there's too much light shining on that, then it's going to think it hasn't reached the tape yet, and that's still leader because it's still seeing the light that would be shining through the leader. Uh, I wonder if there's something easy I can grab and put it over that part to block it. That's not very good though, because then we don't see all the good stuff going on. You can even see the brushes where the head pickup works in this one. Nope. Yeah, it seems something is messed up on the mechanism, which is a little bit disappointing, and I have no idea what that is because I've never used one of these, or debugged one of these things before. Had this. It sort of worked. 10 years ago or whenever, you could get a very grainy picture on it, and that's it, I never tried to work on it at all. I want to know, is that is that spindle coming up and turning this, sort of, how can we work that out? So we can't really put the cartridge in disassembled because it sits on this, this side, we really need it to sit on that side. Would that be possible to do? I wonder if we should just try it. I kind of don't have anything to lose at the moment. But we should try. Ah, oh, no. The problem is going to be that the rollers and things are in the top side. Oh, it's going in the wrong direction. Okay, well that means it thinks that it's still ejecting, does it? It's not engaging the the ingestion direction. No wonder it doesn't spin up. Okay, so the only thing we can do now is investigate the mechanism and try and work out what decides what direction this is turning and I guess that must be stuck or upset uh, for some reason. I'll think about this and then we'll carry on and see if we can debug it. Found something. Got some of the service manual and it's been scanned and photographed in a poor quality manner. But there are some bits there that might be useful. See the part number up the top there of the, the order number of the service manual. It seems to me like the first two digits of that is the year of either when the manual was released or the machine was released. 76, those numbers seem to correlate with that. So I'm guessing this is from around the mid 70s. Pretty interesting uh, specifications. This thing has a proper flying erase head, so you can do actual insert editing with this. Pretty nice. Video only editing. So you press the edit button on the front panel and it says that we'll wait till the next field starts and then start the insert at that point so you get a nice clear cut. This is some overview. Now, there's several pages here which describe some stuff and I think there's also more that are missing because you can see there in the back of this there's a picture of the take-up reel but I haven't got any pages that show that. So unfortunately we're missing something but I'm not sure what that is. But we can read this at least, what happens when you insert the cartridge. And I've studied these a little bit to try and work out why would this be going in the wrong direction. And it's to do with one of these things must be stuck, or these levers. Because you've got a roller that brings the turning in one direction here. And then there's another one. This here, that solenoid's called the... Pressure, oh, okay, not that one then. Pressure roller solenoid, so that's to when it's in playing the pinch roller there. 
the rewind solenoid and the fast forward solenoid and through the various linkings of all these things it's either going to push that roller onto here or this roller it says there rewind roller so it makes me think that that one there is stuck on or one of those levers that pushes that on is stuck on so it ends up going in backwards when it's supposed to be going forwards so it's possible they're both pushing at the same time and this one's stronger so it ends up going backwards but all that is covered under this stuff so we're gonna have to take it apart quite severely to investigate that I think so this motor here drives the head cylinder belt crossed over belt there's the head cylinder unit and then there's another motor I guess is under there somewhere which drives the capstan some other motor down there drive the capstan there that drives the head you can see there it's a little bit slippy that's about as much useful information as I could get out of this manual though because it just tells you the different states of that supply reel going in different directions depending on what you're doing there isn't anything about specifically rem how it gets the tape out but I assume it's part of this rewind auto rewind rewind mode so it's talking about the solenoid down here the rewind rewind solenoid pulls that down pushes this in and then that's turning that turns and then that turns in the rewind direction all right so we'll take heed of that drawing and we'll tip this thing upside down take the bottom off then we're going to take the front off and i think then we can take this off and looking down there there's some screws and there's a special alignment washery thing so i think it's safe to take this off without messing everything up but first we've got to get it tipped over and it's a really horrible thing to move because it's so heavy and it's probably going to tip all sorts of dust out of it isn't it we'll just get the video cable out of the way since we're not going to need that at the moment it probably weighs more than 20 kilograms okay here's the bottom and we'll undo the screws caution do not remove cover okay I guess we're not allowed to remove it I think we have to do this because there's probably stuff holding down the front panel which is covered by this bottom cover should get some scales and weigh this thing. Oh, look at all that good stuff in there. Oh, yeah, that's wrecked. That's a shame. Well, that looks really good. Some nice motor here for the capstan. And there's an AC synchronous motor for the head. Oh, and then it's got this thing. I wonder if that can control the speed by putting a bit of drawer on it. So it looks like a shaded pole motor, but it's something else. See some sort of speed sensing or regulating device. Uh, that belt's pretty much ruined. It did seem to get up to speed though. Hmm. I'm wondering if we should try flipping the belt over. Whether that would help anything. No, I don't think it's any better. Just like what we found last time. Getting new belts, I don't know, maybe it would be possible. I don't think that's what the problem is here. There's various wires, big capacitors probably ready to let go. I guess there's a bunch of screws now that have been exposed along there for removing the front panel. Alright, I weighed it on the scales and it's 22 kilograms. No wonder it's hard to move around. I'll take the front off. I'm we'll probably have to pull some knobs off. This screw here's pretty munted. Someone's been in there with a non js screwdriver. Okay, front's off. Should have a little look in here. You see now the pause button. It's not mechanical. It's got a switch there with this stuff on it, but then it goes to another more grunty switch. I wonder if that controls power to a motor. Like AC, like to this here, yeah, probably. Some brake thing. 
the timer thing. I guess that's driven by this belt here. Off this pulley. Oh no, that goes over to this, the like, mechanical tape timer. So where did that come from? Oh, I moved that around, whatever that is. That's the thing it uses to work out whether you've reached your thing yet or not. And it's got some contacts that get moved around. That piece there moves around, which moves that around. Okay, good. I guess someone's been in there doing something with the meters, put tape on it. That's the edit button. And got those snapped off switches there. There's light bulbs behind these things. I guess those are all blown because they would have been on for so long. The surround thing of them has gone very cracked. All right, that's enough fiddling around with that. Now we're going to take off this cassette housing with the screws. Maybe it's not a cassette, it's a cartridge, isn't it? That's what they call it. Does a cassette have to have two reels in it to be a cassette? Is it a cartridge when it only has one reel in it? All right, does this lift off? Oh. No. Something's going to happen when this comes off. It might be ending this machine. Uh, we might have to take this out. So this cassette guide has got that thing, that thing, and this thing. So that's where the tape gets shot down. Oh, ooh, this comes out too, does it? And there's a linkage down here which needs to come off. Uh, I don't know about that. Why are we doing this? Because we want to see what's, what's causing this thing to go in the wrong direction. It's definitely a little pin thing there. Is it possible we can do this without it? Because the fast forward solenoid... Oh, I've engaged it now. It's engaged. Where's the stopping one? This is just one rod. One rod down the side. Oh, I see it's got a... It's got a... A thinner bit on it, but it's... It's a long way down. And the thinner bit's pointing in the wrong direction. And, and necked down, but on the shaft. To allow it to slide past and come out. We've moved all this stuff around now, though. Oh, it fell out down to the bottom. Okay. Now that thing's out of the way. Okay. Yeah, that rod there. Well, I guess we can insert it again. Yeah, it's just been crimped on one bit so it can fit through a little slot in the lever. Now my suspicion was that some solenoid had become stuck and it, or break or some rollers stuck and that meant that it was running in the reverse direction it should have been running in the forward direction. Nothing running in any direction. Let's do this business here. Because that, that lever brings that thing in. Which should get that running in that direction. Which is the direction for um, pushing the tape out of the cartridge, isn't it? That's sitting there. It needs to turn this way. Unless I'm turning that the wrong way. Oh, well, we can look on that drawing, can't we? So it turns this way. Or does it? It's a crossed belt. Yeah, that's the right way. Yes, because when we look at this, there's actually two layers on this thing. Differential gear. And that has got one turning one way and one the other way. So that's how it does the rewind and forward directions. Because one of these rollers here is touching the 
upper part of that thing they call the differential gear and the other one down here is touching the lower part so that's how it can go in either direction okay so that's the back tension thing which adjusts this felt pad around there okay that's how you re retract that so that thing can sink I guess and it comes up as it's spinning and it clicks clicks itself into these holes in the bottom of the the reel so there doesn't appear to be any problem here it's just doing what you'd expect it to do so then what's the problem why didn't it behave as we expected does that mean now we've tipped it upside down something's changed and it uh, oh, that that's a break isn't it yeah so that's because that's really stiff so that's expected these rollers move okay so they're not stuck or trapped or anything and this other one the rewinding solenoid so that works and it goes in the rewind direction sort of I guess we're gonna have a problem if we can't get the the tape wound back in I think it's better when the brakes off because that's pushing at the moment which must be another solenoid from underneath so that's okay so it's fine there's nothing wrong with it all right should we put all this back then and then watch it not work again I don't think there was anything too difficult about this was there it's just getting the pin back through that thing it's probably the most difficult bit well, that was the most difficult to get out in the first place because it didn't really want to turn into the right direction for that and wherever that needs to go under there presumably like that it's just gonna m magically work now isn't it no okay rods in now we screw back these screws do we connect the video cable up now in anticipation of it working or that jinx it to not work all right let's Let's juice it up and see what happens. Oh, I turn off the light again, just to try and not upset it by that. Oh no, I forgot to put back that guide. Whoopsies. Getting too excited. Okay, we have to put back this thing, otherwise it's not going to work. But that was encouraging. Let's hope we didn't snap the head off by that leader coming close to it. Okay, we have to get this thing back in. But that might be the one time it works again. Just like it only worked one time to start with. Okay. Little arm thing. Okay, I think this stuff's all in where it's supposed to go. Okay, let's try that again. The other problem is that door's gonna be running on the top edge of the cartridge. Okay, it's into play mode. Let's get some monitor on. We haven't got any picture. Well, that's encouraging, it's doing something. Well, at least we got to see the mechanism in operation. So that's fast forwarding. Playing. Oh, look! There we go. There's a picture. There was a picture for a little while. I wonder if there's some kind of alignment issue. Try that again and fast forward a little bit and then go back to play. It's like it's got a the lines are very horizontal, like it's been it's not syncing up properly. Let's try these different switches it's got. So that's black and white mode. Also try winding the tracking around but that's not really doing anything there's a skew skew control 
Yeah, the, the little timer thing on the front says we've gone five minutes in now. Oh, look at that! A bit of a picture, and then it rolls away. I wonder if that's because it can't get the head at the right speed. I think that could be the problem there, that it just gets into sync at the right speed just for a short period of time and then it drifts off again. The way the, the angle of the picture sort of tore off sideways, see it was nearly there then. Because that would be a synchronous motor. And then the capstan motor is really careful of this 100 volts business. Yeah, look at that. Perfect picture for a few seconds. Brilliant. Let's stop, rewind. That's good, it's going to rewind the tape so we can get it out. Can't get the tape out when it's threaded half onto that thing. Bit of a flaw in this system. So you always have to rewind your tape to the end before you can stick in a different one. Well, wind it, rewind it to the start before you can stick in another tape. I don't know what happens when it can't rewind, you end up with the tape jammed in there forever. Probably have to abandon it, just cut the tape out and peel it off. Alright, that worked except because it's missing the roller it doesn't clip, click the leader back onto the spool properly. We'll try that, whatever that says, review, tape 2. See what they're reviewing. Did you get there, yes. Yeah, I think without new belts we're not gonna get very far. I suppose we could try wiping them down with isopropyl alcohol and see if that um, tidies them up a bit. Oh look! Got a little picture there for a while before it bounced away. And this is the monitor that's not syncing up. I suppose that's possible, isn't it? If it's gone outside of the horizontal syncing of the monitor. Let's have a look. There's a horizontal hold control on the back. You know, I've probably ruined it by adjusting that. Alright, we'll give the belts a little bit of a wipe and see if that makes any difference. All right, we're going to trip it up again, clean the belts a bit, and then we'll give it one final try, and then that will be us. All right, can I get these belts back in without messing it up? This was quite a thick, thick one. Put the light on, and you know, clean that all up. I remember there's something called rubber renew, but I don't have any of that. So well, that's supposed to make your belts all good as new again. Oh, way grippier. Still completely ungrippy. Is that right or is that twisted weirdly? I think that's right. Oh, that's a shame. That hasn't really changed at all, but this one here is super grippy now. Super grippy now. It's a real thick, solid one, that. This special little pad thing. Super grippy now. <laughs> if we give this a bit more of a hosing down, maybe. It's not likely to help, but we'll see. Alright, so just wiping it. It might be too far gone. And yeah, I don't fancy my chances of spare belts, because remember last time we looked in my spare belt collection, they'd all just glued themselves together from disintegrating. But I've had very little of this type of stuff to dismantle, so I don't think there's much chance of finding a belt of this specification. I'm sure you could order some and thing, but I don't really want to do endless troubleshooting with this machine. I want to preserve its history in a video and some good photos, and then... Well, yeah. Alright, we'll chuck this back in. 
And we'll see how that fares. All right, that might be a little bit better. So now I've got to get this thing tipped up again. The whole bench sags down from the weight of it. All right, final go. Final test, try thing. Try this review tape again. Let's go. Something happened. We'll just fast forward in a bit so we're actually in the tape. Same deal, it's sort of wandered around a little bit and then disappeared. I'm gonna try and grab it with the adjustment on this monitor. Okay, so it did, it did it did line up with the horizontal hold of the monitor adjustment for a little while and then drifts away. So yeah, there's something a little bit unstable. It might be uh, something to do in the video processing circuits just as much as it could be something in the servo controls. But there we go. That's a look at a very interesting, unusual and quite uncommon video cartridge recorder. National NV5130. I don't think these things will be very easy to find these days. They're probably all in the landfill and whoever chucked them there probably got a sore back from doing it. Just clinging on to the last bits of life. All right so next next time we got an exciting episode 100 and I'd like to do something exciting or special good celebration for that but uh, it depends on having stuff ready in time so it might just end up being a normal video and we'll do something exciting another time. But, I don't know, it depends what you think is exciting, doesn't it? I'm also not sure what machines VCR to look at next, but we've got quite a lot of other very vintage machines. So we'll probably be taking a look at some of those. Since we've done this thing of starting right back at the beginning, just holding down the pause to see what that does. Since we're starting at the beginning with these open reel machines, perhaps we should continue that theme by looking at some other uh, similarly vintage machines. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Once it drifts off, if you push pause, it comes back. Which suggests the servo? The, the, the capstan server, because if it's not being driven by the capstan, because that's what decides the speed that the tape's moving. Because yeah, that's pretty stable, which is driving the head. So the capstan drives the tape speed, and if we stop it from doing that, then the picture comes fairly right. It's even got bits of colour floating around in it. But then once it starts moving, after a few seconds it loses sync. Alright, so next time it will be a surprise, I guess, because I'm not sure what we'll be doing next time. But we've got plenty of other old machines to go through. Most of those are VHS, very early piano key VHS machines, some beaters as well. And yeah, we'll have a look at those. Bunch more video cameras. VCC machines. That would be exciting. Even the VCR machines, which is kind of like one of these, but with two reels stacked on one reel stacked on top of the other. VCR format. The actual thing that's called VCR. Video cassette recording. It's the thing that came before VCC. 
video compact cassette. Alright, that's that. That's the cartridge video recorder. We'll just watch it eject the tape. But let me turn the light on. Will that wreck it? Looks like it's going that way, doesn't it? But it's not, it's going this way. Beating with the camera shutter rate and lights and things. The leader on the tape is wider, so it gets stuck in this track. Whereas the tape is narrower, it gets pulled in against the head. That's the cunning trick they've got there. So you see the... It's the usual story, and I forget most of the good details until we're finished. So the tape is narrower than this leader, so the leader is, gets stuck in this track, so it can't touch the head or other things, but then once you get beyond the leader, it necks down to the tape width, which then pulls in against the machine, against the video head. I wonder if we can watch that in action. Can we see? Let's just see if it works in the light. There you go, the tape wound itself in. Oh, it does work in the light. After all that... Oh no, it doesn't, see? Anyway. Alright, there you go. C cartridge video recorder.